Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. Don't this hit make my people wanna jump, jump. James crossover move drives for the rim and finishes. And hobble up, he's cramping up again, Mike. And he can barely can't even make it down the floor. It's a when the pimp's in the crib, ma, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. When the pigs try to get at you, park it like it's hot. Times two. Don't cry cause I'm strong. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Amazing Words. Uh, this is the episode after game one. Sorry it took so long for me to get this out, but um, I had to take a couple days off because I had some, some issues going on with my tonsils. But first and foremost, can I start by saying that all of you are so disrespectful. I don't mean to bite Stephen A's saying, but so disrespectful to the king. There's a feeling angels moving around me. How could you be that disrespectful to the two-time reigning finals MVP? So LeBron had a cramp, had to leave under conditions that really should not occur during the NBA Finals, and it's really something the NBA maybe should have looked into a little bit deeper, although every player had to deal with it. How is it possible that you expect professional athletes to compete in, in a, an arena, in a gym, that even amateur athletes at a YMCA wouldn't want to deal with? With that being said, did Paul Pierce not get carried off the board in 2008? Just hold me close, my darling. Did Dwayne Wade not bust in tears in the regular season game 2007 when he hurt his shoulder? Just hold on, going home. Did Michael Jordan not ask to be uh, taken out of game four of the 1997 NBA Finals? Michael Jordan, the only one more important. But I Do the cramps? All I'm saying is you really need to watch what you're saying. But let's go on to game one. Uh, let's see what we got right here. Despite leaving the game for the last seven and a half minutes, essentially, other than the driving layup he had on Boris Diaw, LeBron still finished leading all scores of 25 points. We saw a fantastic performance by Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili. Duncan had 21 points, 10 rebounds, shot 9 to 10 from the field, joined, I believe, only Wilt Chamberlain to do that in the finals game. Manu Ginobili had 16 points, 11 assists, and 5 rebounds off the bench. You get 18 and 9 from Chris Bosh, who started off scoring, I believe, Eight of the Heat's first 10 points. Dwayne Wade finishes with 19 points. Tony Parker has 19 and 8. And Splitter also added 14 points for the San Antonio Spurs. Not to mention, the Spurs shot 14 of 16 in the fourth quarter and 6 of 6 from threes. Now, here's all I have to say about game one. Had LeBron James played, the Miami Heat would have won. Oh, and can we say happy birthday to AI? Can I Can I wish my Allen Iverson? This is the reason. He's the reason. Wild watch basketball. Shout out to AI. I just want to show him some luck. Back to what we were talking about. Anyways, so if you don't lose LeBron James, Miami wins that game. Spurs had 23 turnovers. And one thing I talked about before the series began is that the Miami Heat will win games when they when they can keep their opponent less than 95. They're a team that likes to get 95 to 100 points and slow the game down. Spurs like to keep the pace going, keep the pace going, have high-scoring games. They'll never win any of those games. Now, I, I have a lot of respect for the San Antonio Spurs, but I'm telling you people, Miami's going to win this series. And, you know, I'm not changing my pick. I'm even more motivated with my pick. Um, I can't see the Heat winning four straight against this Spurs team. I got too much love for Tim Duncan, too much appreciation for the greatness of the entire San Antonio Spurs organization. I will say this. Miami will win the next three. San Antonio will go back to San Antonio in game five and win. And then Miami will close it out in game six for the three P. Um, you know, I, I, I'm picking Miami to win tonight, and I'm skeptical about it because there's no way the Spurs are going to have 23 turnovers again. Um, they're not going to play as, as poorly as they did with handling that basketball. But there's something about the fact that Miami's too nonchalant. And, and, and when I say nonchalant, I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in Miami knows what they're doing. The Spurs are the one team that knows how to defend LeBron. It took LeBron until Game 7 last year to have a really LeBron James type game if you want to count Game 4, which he just padded his stats because they had already won the game because D-Wade was a star of Game 4 last year when they were down 2-1 in San Antonio. Um, but I believe that he's figured out how to play that Spurs team. If they don't want to force him to shoot, he's going to drive to the rim. There's no way stopping him. Um, so what I'm saying is this. 
all the disrespect, all the LeBroning, all the tweets, everything that I saw about LeBron after game one, y'all all are going to eat your words. You see this right here? You're about to see a King James showing. I don't have much to say. The only stats that meant anything in that game was 14 to 16 in the fourth for San Antonio, six for six from three in the fourth, 23 turnovers for the Spurs. Miami didn't have their their leader, the best player on the planet, arguably the top uh, top seven player of all time. Not gonna be no more cramping, ladies and gentlemen. The Miami Heat. Not only will they win tonight, but I'm guaranteeing that they win the next three games. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Hope you guys enjoy the finals tonight. And uh, I'm so happy I don't have to worry about Chris Paul commercials.